Hello everyone and welcome back to another paperback journey where today I'm going to be talking about the books that I bought in the month of January. It's an addiction. It's an addiction. What can I say? I can't stop and I I I don't even want help. I'm fine. I'm fine with it. I like it. Okay, first up, I don't think it's going to be any surprise to you to know that I purchased the Stephen King book. Uh, <laughs> Stephen King is another one of my addictions. Uh, last year, I read over 20 Stephen King books after never really reading any Stephen King, and I really got a taste for it. I've never read Misery. Uh, I've seen the movie. Love a good psychological thriller. I don't think that this story has many supernatural elements, and I actually think that Stephen King, this is a hot take. Stephen King is better when he doesn't include supernatural elements. That's all I'm saying. I'm more afraid of his human characters, the psychos, you know? This is about a famous author who is held captive by his number one fan, Annie Wilkes. I'm looking forward to that kind of like claustrophobic tension and that uh, cat and mouse game between captor and captive. I'm going to read this one this month, so you can look out for this uh, deep dive book review coming out on my YouTube channel in uh, late February. Next up is Follow Me to Ground by Sue Rainsford. I think this book falls within the magical realism genre, which is a genre that I either usually really love or really hate. And I hope that this falls into the, the, the former. This book is about Ada and her father who live in the woodlands on the edge of a small village. And they have the kind of magical ability to heal people by opening them up. Creepy, right? Ada and her father are described as both less than and more than human, so they're, they're not quite human. And Ada um, kind of comes into a quandary where she's can't really decide where she belongs. Does she belong with her father in the woods, or does she believe uh, does she belong with humanity? She's been, I think, forbidden to kind of intermingle with humans uh, by her father, and so yeah, I, I think this is going to be something which is gothic and otherworldly. And yes, yeah, sometimes that works really well for my tastes. Sometimes not. We'll see. The next book that I purchased in January is this pretty fat boy, you know. Um, it is Musashi by Iaiji Yoshikawa. I hope I'm pronouncing that name correctly. I always get embarrassed when I pronounce a name wrong. Um, and I'm currently reading Shogun by James Clavell. It's just got me in the mood for books that are set in feudal Japan. Read Reading Shogun is like taking a time machine to a time and a place that is, of course, geographically so foreign to me, but also in the quality of life and, 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 and their beliefs is so different to, to my experience of life. Um, and it's just fascinating to me that this is a time and a place that existed it feels almost fantastical when, when when you're reading it, you know? It feels like a fantasy. Shogun, dope, and I, I, I just, I just want more of it. I just, I just want more of it. The story is about Miyamoto Musashi uh, as he journeys from young brawler to experienced legendary swordsman. I'm really excited for the kind of like rich historical setting and the description of samurai culture. I think this book is quite heavy on philosophy and personal growth and taking your time and becoming exceptional. And I just love it when reading not only entertains, but also makes you feel as if you're being nourished. Do you know what I mean? Like you, as you're reading it, you're just thinking, yeah, yeah, this is, this, this is good for me. This is good for me. Next book that I purchased in January is Stoner by John Williams. I've seen this book recommendation bouncing around TikTok and the way that it's described really kind of drew me in and intrigued me. It's kind of described as quiet, slow, but rich. You know, it's a, a, a book which is deep rather than broad. This book is about a young farm boy who grows up to be a uh, English university professor. Uh, William Stoner is his name. And he's just living an 
ordinary life that maybe a lot of us might be able to relate to, uh, an unsatisfying marriage. Not me. I, I, not me. Not me, mate. I love my wife. I'm having a great time with my wife. I'm just saying some people might be able to relate to an unsatisfying marriage, uh, a, a career which didn't really pan out the way that they wanted it to, um, he, the, the direction of his life isn't quite where he wants it to be, that kind of frustration. I think this book relies quite heavily on introspection. And I'm always drawn to stories that are able to kind of elevate the mundane to the extraordinary, you know? And I, I, I'm, I've got a good feeling about this one. And uh, while we're on the subject of John Williams, that brings me to my next book, Nothing But The Night. And I just love these covers. Look at these covers. They're so, I don't know, there's something about them. I, the, the, if you want to know what kind of cover I like, look at this. Just look at this. This is what this is what I'm into. So before he wrote Stoner, John Williams wrote his debut novel, Nothing But The Night. And I'm curious to see how his debut novel kind of sets the stage for his later works. This book is about, uh, it's another character-driven book, apparently, um, which takes place over the course of a single day. Uh, and it's about a young man named Arthur who is living in the city. And again, he's living this kind kind of life of frustration and anticipation for things to maybe get better. He's a college dropout, he's living off an allowance, and the only way that he's able to kind of numb the pain is through alcohol. And he's drinking a lot of it, uh, his, his whole life is kind of a mess, and then his estranged father reaches out to him and says, listen boy, I'm going to be in town, do you want to meet up? He agrees to meet up with his father, and then as far as I'm aware, this book takes place in the kind of lead up to him meeting his father as he thinks back to why he and his father kind of fell out of contact with each other. He's kind of facing past trauma and he's just getting absolutely hammered, just totally obliterated in the in the lead up to meeting his father. This this sounds very interesting to me. The next book I bought in January is Death of a Salesman by Arthur Miller. This is a cornerstone of American theatre. It's probably something that a lot of Americans that are watching this maybe studied when they were at high school or college or something. Um, and it's something that I've always been aware of, but I've just never never read, never uh, watched the play, never watched the movie with Dustin Hoffman, nothing. It's also a Penguin classic, and I don't know if you can see behind my fat head, but on my top shelf there, I've got uh, roughly around 20 Penguin classics up there, starting a little bit of a collection, you know, uh, and I'm trying to make it to the end of that top shelf, you see, like, so I've got a little bit more to go. I will say, though, that as far as this is concerned, pretty thin. I don't think it's going to do that much damage, but, you know, adds to the collection, and I am genuinely excited to read this one. This book is actually written in a script format, um, so, you know, it will have stage directions and uh, the characters' names besides their dialogue. That's fine to me. I, I, I've read that kind of thing before and I can still get fully immersed in it, no problem. Um, and I understand that this is a tragedy and an exploration into the American dream and if it really does exist uh, the, the, the way that it once did. Uh, it's told through the eyes of Willie Loman, who is a struggling salesman living in, I think, New York. Um, and it's, it's a, a kind of a, a centered around his family and the ways that he tries to justify his failures to himself and to his family it sounds like something that is going to break me up. I'm I'm from quite like a working class background. Um, and so I feel like maybe some of these struggles, it, 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 I, I, I'm probably going to cry. I'll just put it like that. I, I, I probably am going to cry when I read this. Um, and I can't wait. I was actually a salesman for just over 10 years. And I'll tell you something, man. Sales is not a job for the faint of heart. It's like I can I, I've been this. I've been this. This man just laying on the ground 
fists clenched like oh it's got massive highs it's got massive highs and devastating lows and that's just every week you're getting that every week boom 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 it's hard and i'm so glad i'm out of that life Whew, i'm so glad i'm out of that life but happy to dive back into it <laughs> through through fiction uh the next books that i purchased are actually a series and uh, these are all of the books that are available in paperback. It's the Red Rising uh, series. There is another book that's available, but it's only available in hardback. I don't mess with hardbacks too much. I've got to be honest with you. I, I do prefer paperbacks. They are better. Red Rising has been a series that's been on my list for quite a while now. Uh, it's like a blend of science fiction and rebellion. I'm going to be doing actually a deep dive of all of the books in this series, starting with Red Rising. So if you'd like to see my review of Red Rising, then you can click up here. Thanks so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it and happy reading.